just a few. Compared to us, <laughs> like forty-five thousand. Com- compared to like the, the average normal teenager, I definitely have followers, but she got clout. Got clout, and Max, people yo. really like that. People really like that. So, yeah. If I am friends with someone, or I really like someone, and I'm talking to them, there's always that sort of doubt in my head of, oh, oh my god, the Batman cup. Nice, Ari. Ari drinking out of Batman cup. <laughs> There's always that gotta get that water. Of like, yeah, refreshing. Do they like me for me, or do they like me because of my followers? Mm-hmm. You know, every single time I make friends with someone or I'm talking to someone, that's that's what goes through my head. <laughs> What is up, everyone, and welcome to the Clueless Podcast. I am your host, Jared Schwartz, here with my fellow hosts, Ari Leshner, Noah Birnbaum, and Mia Janess, who is also today's guest. Uh, now, I know what you're thinking. It's probably like, who the hell are these guys? But <laughs> you guys will find out. The Clueless Podcast is here to work tirelessly to bring our listeners the best and most authentic content we could possibly bring to the table. We are excited to embrace uh, the beginning of our long journey and bring our listeners the best possible interviews and takes on current issues that we possibly can from a teenage lens week after week. With that being said, Dennis or Noah, would you like to tell us where we can be found on social media? What's up, Clueless listeners? I'm one of your hosts, Noah Birnbaum or Dennis, whatever you want to call me. Our (laughs) social medias can be found on TikTok at Clueless Pod and on Instagram at The Clueless Show and on Facebook, Facebook, Clueless.show. Hey guys, what's up? It's Ari Leshner here. To listen to our show, you can find us on YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes. To listen to our weekly content every single Thursday, count it on. Yeah. Um, guys, it's winter break. How are we Thank feeling? God. Oh my Finally, God. Finally, man. So much. Screw these Finally. teachers, Dude. man. Yeah, no, like, you know, like normally just be chilling on the beach and um enjoying a fun time but no not this year because the yeah. corona corona 19 very corona very 19. fun time. Love corona. my mom I got vaccinated today oh, so oh no my way dad, wow. my grandpa got vaccinated today oh, that's and, so sweet. and my dad got vaccinated last week yeah. congratulations so everyone's gonna get vaccinated before me do you i yeah, heard you can't get the vaccine we're gonna be like no Unless don't you have to be like 16 or something yeah, but I'm the yeah, oldest you have one to be here, 16. so I'm going to be vaccinated before. Fact show. Oh, yeah, we got a 15-year-old on this thing. That's, that's an yeah. honor. That's an honor. Imagine, uh, imagine you... having a 15-year-old on here. You guys should feel special. And, I know. and she's also a Disney star, so let's get to the interviewing. Yeah. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce today's guest and also host of the show. She's a teenage actress and has acted in many shows, Skyward, and Orange is the New Black, and is most heavily known for her stardom on Disney Junior's Fancy Nancy. Mia Janess, what is up? What's up? How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm excited to be here with y'all. I can't wait to continue to collaborate with you guys on this. It's been fun so far, and I can't wait to see what happens. Yeah, it's 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 a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Um, oh, before we get into this, I would like to uh, thank all of our sponsors for sponsoring this episode. And if you didn't get the joke, <laughs> we don't have any sponsors. So if nope. you'd uh, like Yo, to honey, sponsor us, just, honey, yeah, just um, shoot us a DM honey, on Instagram. Honey, yeah, uh, uh, honey. What's, what's the name? Yeah, Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> yeah, Raid Shadow Legends. Raycon, 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 Raycon earbuds. earbuds. Happy Blue Chill, like, Lord like, VPN, amazing. right over Ooh. here. Ooh, or if good. we want Blue Apron. Oh my oh, god, yeah, some yeah, fire, yeah, food. Fire. Fire fire food. food fire. Fire food, man. Fire. Yeah, man. Absolute yeah, fire. Man. Yeah. So let's I guess let's just dive right into this. Um so like your forte, right? Is acting, singing. You know, I see you posting your sing videos on Instagram all the time. So if you kind of bring us back and let us know how that all started. Yeah, so uh I've always been interested in the performing arts. It's always been something that really was fascinating to me from a really young age. Um, how I kind of got started in this is I decided one day when I was maybe five or six that I would audition for a community theater production of the musical Gypsy. I ended up getting a part and immediately from the minute we started rehearsals, I was like, this is what I want to do. You know, even from that young age, I knew. Um, how old were you? Next- 
I was five or six. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. So my next yeah, audition I think I was, was... in my pants back then. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't we all? Well, I didn't know how to tie yeah. my shoes. Man. Um, <laughs> so my next audition after that was for Annie on Broadway. And I made it to the final four for Molly. And I, I, I loved everything about that process. I loved the work that it entailed. I loved um, singing for people. And I loved the I loved everything about it. Shortly thereafter, I landed a role in Les Miserables um, on tour. I was on that tour for a year. Uh, I made my debut at seven years old. I just turned seven. Wow. Yep. So wow. let me let me interrupt you a little bit. So at five or six, if I'm not mistaken, that is a uh, an age where the brain probably isn't very developed yet. No, so I don't I don't know if I don't know if you made that decision by yourself. Is there someone that influenced you like into this space and gave you the advice that you needed to be so successful? Yeah, so my mom is an actress. She's super oh. successful and I love her. But I probably wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't have her guidance and her advice. She's one of the smartest people I know. Um you know, she tapes all my editions for me. She gives me notes when I need them. She gets me from place to place. She's definitely been like my biggest supporter and has been immensely helpful. So uh-huh. I have a question. Did she push you to do this first audition Not at in all. the play? Not at all. She actually really? was kind of apprehensive to let me do it. Um, you know, she uh-huh. knew how grueling and unforgiving this industry is because it is. It's really, really hard. Um, yeah. she, she knew that. And she was like, are you positive? Are you like 100% sure that you want to get involved in this? And I was like, yes, I am. So did, that was that. Did you have did you have any like at that age like idols or someone that you looked up to that made you want to dive into that really quickly? Probably like, my mom. Yeah. Mom what did was she Broadway movies TV like what? So she did? my mom, um, her name is Emily Bauer. She <laughs> Nate Bauer <laughs> Fitness. <laughs> Nate Bauer <laughs> Fitness. <laughs> Nate Bauer <laughs> Fitness. My mom has been in Pokemon <laughs> since I was born. She's... Pokemon. Wait, mm-hmm. Pokemon? Yep. Wait, no, no, no. What? It's oh, Pokemon. That's right. It actually Pokemon. is Pokemon, not Pokemon. Fun wait, fact. Wait, like cards yeah. or no? This chair. No, is it's so a show in the movies, and she's been in Yu Gi Oh and Dragon Ball Z, I think. And wait, like uh, as like a voice, uh, like dog. over? Yeah, she's a voiceover artist, but she was also she uh. did a lot of musical theater growing up. Um, she was in the European tour of hair and a bunch of you other know really I stuff. was actually in my fifth grade play I was actually an Oompa Loompa. Oh word! Oh, that's and so for good. the costume social too. And for the costume social. Wait, where you? Social. Yes, I remember that. Oh, that was great. I like that a lot. Yeah. So um, if you guys didn't know already, uh, because I'm sure we have some listeners that know that we all go to camp together, so that's facts. how we met. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we that is how we met. And um I I have a question kind of regarding that. So, we recorded an episode like uh last week and surprise <laughs> we are we are uh human. So, this isn't our first time doing the uh yeah. this episode. This is my first time being interviewed, however, we decided to do this on a whim. Yeah. So, I remember you um you mentioned well and you mentioned it today like you're excited to embark on this uh on this journey and when we when we kind of just shot the idea at you for this podcast i mean it's no surprise yeah, about dude. your your following on instagram and your your <laughs> uh career accomplishments what made you want to join the show with the three of us that i just thought it would be really fun i mean i love you guys and like you guys are funny and smart and witty, and I just thought it would be a really fun idea, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, and kind of, like, going going back on to what we began with, like, how did you get into it? Mm-hmm. What was what was that first thing? Or have you had that first thing yet? That you were like, oh, shit, like, this is it. I'm, like, this is going to be my career. I'm going to do this. Like, and I'm successful at it, and I'm good at it. Here we go. I don't think I truly realized the like how big of a deal this was until I 
was in Matilda. I played Matilda. Uh, right, for about right. Year on I remember you would walk around camp, and that was the only <laughs> thing you'd wear, your Matilda <laughs> jacket. Yeah. My Matilda it was so comfy, yeah. dude. So comfy. It was like a um, raincoat. Yeah, no, when it yeah. was a rainy day, I had my Matilda raincoat because all the kids on tour had them, and I was like, I need that. But when it was a rainy day, I would wear my Matilda jacket. Um, you know, I actually vividly remember, like, us four on, like, the the middle patch at camp where everyone, like, kind of hangs out. And Dennis and, is uh, rolling around. Noah Birnbaum, over. or Dennis, <laughs> okay. as we call him, he started rolling around on the oval. Yeah. He was like, Rrr. a little bit crazy back then. <laughs> Yeah, just were a little, we all? Yeah, were we just all a little, little bit, bit like... How old were we then? Uh, 10 or 11. 11. Yeah. 11. Oh my god. Also, fun fact for you listeners that didn't know, me actually had like a huge crush on uh, Dennis. Just... And then uh, <laughs> and then he kind he kind of messed up. I yeah, messed up. Mess we're not going to talk just, we're not going to talk about the mistake, premature but... mistakes, premature mistakes. I was 11. I was yeah. 11. No. Dennis, I love you, but I don't want you. Dennis, Dennis was like seven back then. I don't know. I ship 11, it. So. Seven. No. I ship it. No, but definitely uh, going back to your question, Jared. My when I first when I realized like I was good at this and that this was kind of a big deal is my debut uh, playing Matilda. It was opening night. We were at the I don't remember what theater it was. Uh, we were in L.A. No and, you know, there was a bunch of really, like, prominent people there. And it was opening night. And I remember getting a standing ovation from everyone in the crowd. And I remember getting so emotional when I was bowing, like, you know. How like, old were you? Know, like, Ten. Ten. Oh, my wow. gosh. Maybe, no, no, no. Nine. I just started fourth that grade. Is, that is crazy. Um, I just started fourth grade. And I just remember wow. being so overwhelmed and so sure that this is what I was going to do with my life. So and, and you, you, yeah, go ahead. So these these trips, they must have, they couldn't have been like all during the summer, right? So school must no. have been a lot different for you. Right. Yeah. So when you are a working kid, if you're under the age of eighteen, you're by law legally, uh, you have to have a teacher on set with you. You have to uh. do at least three hours of schooling a day, or you're not allowed to work. So when you're on tour, you also have, you have like, depending on how many kids there are, you may have one teacher, you may have two, you may have three, you may have four, um, touring with you at all times. So if it was a weekday, we would have school at the theater, uh, before our show. And then we would go back to our hotel or go into town and get dinner, do our show, do it all again the next day. Um, yeah. And if, so there are a lot of kids in Matilda. And not that many in Lima is obviously there were like four, but so many kids in Matilda. So and obviously there were understudies. So if you weren't like actually on stage one night, you would be backstage and you would be doing school and on standby in case something happened. Okay, wow. wait. So fast forward to like twenty twenty now when you're when you're fifteen again yep. and on our type of fifteen year old oh, on the show. Um, so do you go to you go to like a special school for like perform what performing yeah, arts or I like celebrities yeah 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 so i go to a special school where i live and it's a school that um basically just is a school for people with careers kids with careers so yeah, there's yeah. actors singers dancers uh, uh athletes um musicians entrepreneurs anything you can really think of okay well, let me let me ask this so like how how are the teachers there are they understanding are they, they are all like so pushing fantastic yeah. they so are... how many like Wait, how sorry, many if like I could hours just, if... of school? Yeah, yeah, yeah you go yeah how many hours of school man it's yeah. a normal school day i have oh, really? school from eight fifty to 2 30 because okay oh, so that's basically... shorter than 50 to 2 30 yeah yeah, well, ours is like a, no, it's not. Or it's like an hour shorter. But like have, what, one uh, of the free, so. one of the things that we're gonna yeah. talk about, like a lot on this show, is school because I know that's something like I'm so passionate about. I know Dennis Noah has become like very passionate about it, and like I I have a ton of opinions that we can get into like another time about like how I feel like in school the teachers need to and the 
people that make the curriculum need to do a better job of bringing out that creative side in kids um, and, not, and, yeah. and not just stressing these standardized tests that are that we have every week. I mean, if, you if I can tests every week. Oh, in some yeah. of my classes and especially in a year like this year, like so I, I wanted to share. I used to like, have math I, tests every single just, week. It's terrible. No, we have a math test every week. And I wanted like I was thinking so I, I was doing a lesson like you know, so now COVID, we have online lessons with videos and like, you know, oh, you take so your notes. So At the bad. beginning of one of these videos, the teacher literally goes, so, you know, today we're going to teach you uh, this lesson about your test tomorrow. And, you know, you may not become a uh, a master at it today, but, you know, after a couple of days of practice, you will. And I'm like, what the fuck? What is this? Like, you're t we have a test, right? A test is about mastery. <laughs> But the goal is to get 100% on the test. And personally, and I know many other students get very discouraged by getting something that's not in 100 and really strive and work very hard to get a grade that's over in 100, right? Yo, literally, so what? If I'm not able to, ma if you're telling me I'm not able to master this skill, how am I supposed to be successful? So, like, I just wanted, like, to touch on that briefly. And we're going to get into that so much on this podcast because, as you could see, that brought, that, like, really brought the fire out of me. I'm very passionate about that <laughs> subject. But what are, like, some of the things that your teachers do? Do they help you out with your career? And, do, like, do they understand that, like, at the end of the day, you know, the world is changing and people not everyone's going to be a scientist when they grow up not everyone's going to be a mathematician mm -hmm. you know there's certain subjects that are important but not everyone's going to do what they do yeah definitely um my teachers at my school are so forgiving and so kind and they really are just there to help you like they're, they're really just there to like make you succeed and help you succeed if i'm struggling in a subject my teachers will reach out to me first and they'll say hey let's set up a meeting that yeah that's awesome i God. mean that I would be yeah, i have one teacher Ari, like that i have one teacher Every like that teacher. and they all no, no, no. will make comments on my work when i hand it in they'll say okay do it again now do it like this i'll hand it back in and i'll get 100 and my no, teacher got definitely... so frustrated when I asked her a question like a week or two ago, she's like, well, shouldn't you know that? I just moved into this class. So I was like, no, no, no she's like yelling at me. And I, I was new to the class. So I was like, are you serious? And I, I, yeah, I wanted to say something, but you know, you can't really talk back to a teacher. Especially, you? especially this year, like we're at school every other day. And, and most of the time we're on, at virtual school because, you know, we got these irresponsible kids that don't wear a freaking mask. That's a whole nother subject Where or are whatever. Mask? You guys are going to take anything Yo, away from this? Wear your stupid mask so we can all get back <laughs> to our silly yeah. little lives. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, and it's Good like, God. I feel th there's definitely some teachers that understand right i have a bunch of teachers that maybe don't put as much effort as they could mm -hmm, in because sure. you know they have they have children they have children that they have to deal with and i completely understand so if that takes a gap out of your life away from teaching then don't give us as many you know quizzes and tests and there's some teachers that do that some teachers that don't and i yeah i just feel like you know nowadays with covid it's 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 tough it's tricky um yeah. but if you yeah. you are a teacher out there Credit to you, but it's a lot take of work. Advice. Hey, next episode we are dedicating a whole episode on stories, advice, and you know it's not to discourage you or anything, but we're just here to yeah. you know to voice make our it better. Opinions. Yeah, and shout out Prince EA. That's like one of the guys. Oh yeah, I first saw. Oh, that random his, dude. His content. He's, he's is, awesome. His yeah, content's he's awesome. Sick. He's sick. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, but my teachers at my school really just want to help me succeed. My classes are super small. And I, my history class, which is my favorite class ever, I'm in history too, um, it's, it's so fantastic. It's me and one other kid and my teacher. Wait. That's my uh, entire class. Are you really? kidding me? I'm so serious. And it is my favorite class and I'm so engaged and my teacher really has such creative projects for us. All of my teachers have such creative projects and they're all so sweet and so kind and I've never been happier with my teachers. Ever. So just to compare and contrast, like you said... You said that your your teachers are so creative with their assignments. So give me an example, and then I'll give you an example of me and Dennis go to the same school, not Ari, mm -hmm. but like an example, an example of what of our work, next. yeah, what our work is like, so we can see. Just, just, yeah. I was, I, this, I'm very curious. So, hmm. 
maybe give me a second, but maybe they're not necessarily creative. It's nothing special. It's just that they are engaging and they care about engaging. what they're doing. Okay. Yeah. Like, no. And I think there's some like subjects that do that. Like, for example, like I, I think, you know, Spanish, you know, it has its ups and downs it's because it's so funny. The, because of the language barrier between teachers mm -hmm. and students and you know sometimes those teachers aren't i'm not gonna get into that but um I'm not very fond think... of your spanish <laughs> okay <laughs> um <laughs> just, just to voice it just to voice school, it at my old school my old spanish teacher was i'm not going to sugarcoat it abusive really yep abusive? we'll, we'll like, get into that physically like you would get hit not physically but there's Mentally. recordings Men there uh, are recordings of people like yelling going at me. Oh, dude. I have know. a recording from my math lab class of this guy. He he had like um I was in math lab in like sixth or seventh grade, I remember. And this guy, like, he had a stroke a couple years earlier, so he like he wasn't there fully. So he he was like screaming at the kids all the time and like I don't I don't go to the nicest schools where I live. I don't go to like private schools or anything. So the kids aren't always great. That's how it was And my you had this like, you had this like old dude who had a stroke and wasn't fully there in his head teaching like these uh, yeah. not nice kids. So it was, some, it was difficult. Sad. I don't know how some of these people get like hired. I just, I don't get oh, it. We have yeah. to save this for the episode. We have to save this for the episode. Yeah, I was yeah, gonna I tell a story to that that I told that I told Ari and Dennis on Xbox, but I'll save it for next week. About speaking about being like abusive with words, I have a good story for uh, oh, next man. week. But There's um, some teachers who yeah. just yell and yell and yell. Oh, you too. Have a good oh, so much fun. Okay, do you guys have any more questions for me? Uh yeah. Word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So, does the work you're doing ever feel like work? Like, ever? Yeah. Okay. And that's why I like it. So, um, oh, you like, you like having to work. I do. I, I like how it's not fun all the time. I like how it uh -huh. feels like I'm doing something productive. You know, if I, if it was fun all the time, it's all about, you know, I just had a conversation with my mom about this because I was feeling like less motivated and I wasn't staying in shape both physically and work-wise um it's all about the work you put in if you're not putting a certain amount of work in you're not going to get anything out of it right. you know as much as i wish my agents would just be like here's a series to star in we're going to hand it to you that's not how that works i have to work yeah. on it i have to work and i have to hone my craft and eventually i'll so i'm not like too familiar but like you have to see so what do you do you like try out for a bunch of roles and then eventually yeah, so you get you get that one that you want not necessarily so um the way an audition process works typically is if you're with an agency or you have representation they'll send you over a an audition they'll mm -hmm. say hey pending your interest on this role we have these sides we have this appointment set up for you You'll have to memorize a short dialogue. Uh, you'll have to record it because nothing is in person anymore. Usually you'd be going in, or not usually, but a lot of the time you'd be going into a casting office and reading with a casting associate. Um, but, sorry, I forgot what I was saying just now. Okay, yes. Uh -huh. So, yeah, you have to read for these roles. Uh, you'll send it over to your agents. Your agents will send it over to the casting associate. Your tape is not guaranteed to be watched. It probably won't be. Um, but if your tape is watched and they like you, you'll get sent on to another round and you'll have to do the same thing for more people and it'll be watched by more people. And then you'll probably do it again. And this time it'll be on a Zoom with, you know, like director, producer, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And then you'll get the job. Oh, you won't. Yeah, I know. I have like... a question. Yeah, what's yeah. your question? So, how do you feel about not really, like, being able to live the normal kid slash teenager life? So, that's something I've always really struggled with. Um, a work-life balance has been something I've, you know, always kind of had issues with. Um, as much as sometimes I wish I could do normal teenage things, that's not really, that's not really an option, you know? Um, yeah. 
I definitely do have a very normal life. Like, I have a very, very normal life. Yeah. Because there's certain things I just can't do, and I'm fine with that. If it means my career is at stake, then that's that. And, like, I know I, like, you know, normally as a teenager, you go through, like, you know, like, things your brain is telling you something, and then you feel a different type of way every day. There's anxiety, depression, all that stuff. And I know, like, like, we, over the summer, we talked a lot about, you know, that stuff and, like, how to, you know, like, get away from all the drama that exists in our daily lives. And, you know, for me, something that I always fall back on is, you know, like exercise, basketball, boxing, all that stuff. What What's something that you like fall back on to take when, when the work gets hard to take yourself away and bring yourself out of this whole world of work and constant pressure? And That's a that. really, really, really good question that I've actually never been asked before. Um, so thank you. Uh, um, yeah. Something that I tend to fall back on is the support of my friends. I have some really, really loyal friends in my life that I've been lucky enough to keep around. Um, And I know that if I need anything, they're going to be there for me. And that's something that I kind of remind myself. And another thing is, um, you know, just kind of taking time to myself. Um, If I'm too worried about other people, I forget to worry about myself so taking some time alone not necessarily isolating myself but just just chilling out a little bit um is definitely always helpful for yeah me. that's that's very important just like you know i know during like the past couple of weeks like when school's been shut down like just like you know maybe not seeing my friends for two weeks and just like staying home like really just felt good i mean now i'm ready to break loose and go hang oh, out sure. with people <laughs> but unfortunately you have to find the blend have, we still have yeah, a yeah, uh, pandemic, but yeah, yeah no, so and I on also the topic of friends. Yeah. I recently in uh, in October, my friends don't like me for some reason anymore because of this one That's girl. I'm sure she's, mm, I'm sure she's oh, watching her? this right now. Her, yeah. Oh God. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> want to give not, her not <laughs> her, not the one that you, not the one that you're thinking of. I believe. Mm. Oh, but um, no, no. this other girl, I, I haven't told any of you about her, but she she just hates me for some reason. So um, if you're out there listening to this, don't hate me anymore because because um, I want to hang out with my friends again. And I don't know why you don't like me. So that sucks. Damn. Shots fired. Yeah, no, I, I feel the Shots same way. Fired, um, shout yeah. out to all my uh, friends out there. You know, you guys are you guys are awesome. Um, <laughs> you guys are and, shout out to uh, and let, let's stay on this to, topic. Um, yeah, shout yeah. out to who? Shout uh, out to no, Sushi. Let's, let's, shout yeah, to yo, sushi, shout man. out. Um, shout out. Can we, like, I, I want to stay on the subject. Yeah. I want to stay on this subject. Um, I remember you, like, mentioned when we, when we first recorded this uh, ep- episode because, you know, we messed up on the first one because it, it was terrible, but th- this one's pretty good. Yeah, um, you said you said you got to, like, watch out, you know, for people using you and being yeah. friends with you for the wrong reasons. Do you have any stories you'd like to share? Or maybe not stories or times that has um, happened to you. If you feel comfortable sharing. Yeah, definitely. Yes, if you feel comfortable. So, <laughs> Safe you know, kind, kind of touching yeah, on facts. that a little bit more and just kind of rounding it out. Um, I think what Jared means by that is I don't have that large of a following right i i have a few followers but yeah people, uh, just a few compared to us <laughs> like forty well, five thousand. Com- compared to like the, <laughs> the average normal teenager i definitely have followers but she got clout got clout and Max, people yo. really like that people really like that so yeah if i am friends with someone or i really like someone and i'm talking to them there's always that sort of doubt in my head of, oh, oh my god, the Batman cup. Nice, Ari. Ari's drinking out of Batman cup. <laughs> There's always that sort get of that doubt water. in my head of like, yeah. refreshing. Do they like me for me, or do they like me because of my followers? Mm-hmm. You know, every single time I make friends with someone or I'm talking to someone, that's that's what goes through my head, and it sucks. But definitely knowing that I have that support system of people who I know love me for me is really, really helpful. So I, I can obviously, um, obviously, like, you can't see through our souls, but I can say for a fact that, 
before I met you, like I didn't even know know you had a following. I was still friends with you. I had no yeah. idea. And then I found yeah. you on Instagram. I was like, whoa. <laughs> is there any people like specifically at our camp? And I know I have some in mind that you feel <laughs> <laughs> that you feel. All right. I just wanted to make that clear because I got, I, oh my God. I wonder some who people. you have in mind because it's probably the same people. Sweet, Candle sweet. or somebody Candle. else. Candle? We mentioned him last episode. Candle. That was Scrap. Yeah, we but... didn't know who you were talking about. Oh, I mean, it... no, you came up with the name. Did I? Candle. Red hair. Oh, man. Oh, no, not that kid. He not doesn't that care. Kid. Oh, I was, doesn't, or, yeah, or, doesn't sushi, care. or sushi. No, sushi no, no. no. <laughs> I, I, was thinking, I was thinking more like older people. On the people. girl's side. Yeah. yeah. Some on, on the, the boys. Too. And also kind of the boy side. Yeah, no. Wait, oh, who? yeah. Oh, I, I know who you're talking about now. This is so weird because we can't like say anything. Yeah, we can't yeah. say anything. Right, guys, but... wrap it up, though. Shout out to all you guys watching. Shout out to y'all. Yeah. If you watch shout this out. entire episode, shout out to you. Shout yeah. out to you, man. Yeah, shout out to or you. Or listen, anything. Yeah. yeah. Audio. If you watch it, you know. Available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Every Thursday. Yeah. Every, Every single Thursday. Thursday. Every single Thursday, you guys. Unless we yeah, say otherwise. Man. All right. But that's our choice. Facts, yo. We'll Thanks, try and keep it consistent, dude. though. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for joining us. Well, well if I could just uh, let me do a little <laughs> outro. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> just a little bit there. And also, yeah. also, also, I wanted to say that I, I, I found a statistic. Uh, is that a, whatever. A, a, statistic, a, yeah. That's yeah, just a little tongue twister there. That, um, that, that most podcasts don't go past seven episodes. So do you think we can make uh, it? We're going to go past I seven think. for sure. Yeah, we just got to like, seven. we just got to go past seven. We gotta, if you're watching this on YouTube, we'll so get in one seven comment, weeks, we'll go past seven. Yep. Yeah. Yep. In seven yep. weeks, it's going to be um, over. But um, quick thank you to Mia for being a great uh, guest on today's first you. episode Woo! of the thank Clueless you, Podcast. Nice. And we will continue to have you <laughs> if, of course, you answer your texts. <laughs> Man. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Yes, oh please, my God. please answer that. The hell um, was that? Yeah, no. I think a bomb we... just went off in my house. Did anybody hear that? Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, I thought that was mine, but um, <laughs> that was oh, that, that's a speaker. That's a speaker. Yeah, that's but, a speaker. Uh, we can't it's wait to keep this thing going and eventually <laughs> see where it goes. Again, you guys can find us every Thursday at Clueless Podcast on YouTube, Spotify, and iTunes, and follow our socials on Instagram at the Clueless Show underscore at Clueless Pod on TikTok. And at clueless.show on Facebook. And Mia, do you know the Twitter handle? Because I think you made that. If not, yeah, it's all I think good. It's clueless underscore pod one. All right. Follow me on Instagram at Ari.Leshner. Follow me on Instagram, and- Mia Sinclair Juness. Two N's, two S's. Uh, follow me at JJ Schwartz and shit. No, actually, don't follow me. And a shout out to all my teachers and all my <laughs> uh, good friends out there. I love That's you guys. Nice. Thank love you, guys. you for Mwah. listening, watching, shout viewing, to, subscribing. Um, Shout out to Bolt. That, isn't that what Everyone Impossible says? <laughs> okay, they don't care anymore. Bye, everyone. Bye, yeah, guys. Anyone, all right. See you See later, See you next dudes. week. Huh, yeah.